Hey guys, don't normally cover our political stuff, but today was an exception. Um, first thing I want to say, I'm just cracking open a bottle of wine here. This is Casa, Casa de la Ermita. Um, it's a 2013 bottle. Cost about 10 euros. It's, I tell you what, you can actually smell the timbers on this one. It smells quite nice. Does it taste nice is the question. A little bit sweet for me. But anyway, but it's got that smoky. If you get some of this, you'll, you'll recognize it. It's like that fresh wood smell um, that you get. I suppose it's more like wet, wet timber. That's what the smell is. But anyway, um, I want to talk about something idiotic out of the UK today. And I'm, it re-emphasizes my point on the crypto side anyway, but we'll leave that to one side for now. So some bright spark in the UK has come up with the idea that pensioners need to be taxed more and the 25 year olds need to be given 10,000 pounds. Take that for a second. Now I'll give you my version and feel free to put your comments below. The 25 year olds haven't paid or earned the ability to save 10,000 pounds or the majority haven't. Let's be honest here, the majority haven't. And I was talking to my wife earlier um, in the fact that there's a very distinctive difference between me and many other people. One of the things is many moons ago, um, when the carpentry was a bit low, uh, one of the jobs I used to do was actually deal with the dead in the sense that uh, for council properties and others, somebody dies in their properties and they need the remnants removing. And sometimes you'll get people, their liquids have dropped into the floorboards, others, they're like there's a guy that actually sat spitting for about two years and it formed into icicles along the stairs. Another being a big fat guy had been wedged behind the door for two weeks and his dog, his dog had been eating him. Um, he also decided to use the bath as a toilet and things like that. So you can get the picture. It's quite grim environments. But do you know what? I take the money. I take the money because at the end of the day, I have a work ethic. I have a responsibility to push forward. Um, so it's not a case of 10,000 pounds needs to be dropped in my lap because that 10,000 pound is not earned. It's not recognized. It has no responsibility. It's the same failing that we have in a benefit class that believes it's entitled to live off the back of everyone else. In the same as you get a failed socialist system that believes that work should be a choice, not a need, or the right of choice is their right. Not that it's funded by everybody else. And when I looked at this today, they're talking about the fact that pensioners should be paying national insurance. Pensioners should be um, having to re-contribute to a system. Here's a little bit of a common sense injection for you. They've already paid their national insurance. They've already paid their contributions. The government is the failure, not them. They're not a burden of state. They've already paid their way. Um, and I would say you would need to analyze from a realistic point of view from those that are paid into the systems and those that haven't instead of burdening those that have with the same brush. Because um, myself, I don't really care about my pension from the UK. I'm, I'm, I've got to be honest, I'm probably a patriotic Brit in the sense that I believe in a united British enterprise, kingdom, whatever you want to call it. But the shower of crap that we get out of the UK is not me. It is not. I do not believe in socialism. I do not believe in everyone's entitled to this, entitled to that. It's a false sense of entitlement. 
Um, I do not believe the NHS is even functioning these days. It lies to itself. It lies in the sense that it relies on a government that does not protect it or work for it. It lies in the fact that it needs, I think there was 3,000 doctors that have been rejected in the last 12 months. That comes from outside of the EU. It lies to itself in the fact that Filipino nurses would rather go anywhere else than the UK because of the, I think it's 36,000, 34,000 pound rule after five years, otherwise they're deported. It lies to itself in the fact that it thinks it can support itself. It lies to the fact that it is overburdened with fat, lazy Brits that quite simply are either receiving health care or expect to be given pensions early and everything else. And I know I'm very blunt. I know I'm very critical on this. And I know I am annoyed with it. Because quite simply, the failure in the UK is coming from the UK. We have a parasitical government. We have a government that simply believes that it should exist because it exists. It's top heavy. It's involved in corruption. It's got the old flag waving from the old monarchy where you've got old Prince Andrew off selling fire arms to other countries. You've got Tony Blair interfering in this EU thing. At the same time, how many of the people that we've gone to war against are on his mantelpiece? with a handshake, including Syria. Um, reality is, if you believe the crap that's coming out of the BBC, if you believe the crap that's coming out of many of these mainstream media things, I tell you now, roll the things back. I was watching a interview that uh, Peter sent over to me from 1975 relating to the common market. Now, bear in mind, the common market is not the EU. The vote was for the common market, not the EU. There was never a vote on the EU. I will tell you now, as a child, because I was born in 1973, I was actually in the Outer Hebrides, which I believe is the only place that voted against the common market. Now, I'll tell you my own personal views on this. I believe the failings of the UK is within the UK. It's not the EU. I do believe that... People like Tony Blair have committed treason against the state. I do believe there is a lot of problems within the country, countries, um, and d divided is not going to fix things. Scotland, with their little Jimmy Cranky, um, expecting to go, oh, we're going to work with China, we're going to do this, we want to be in the EU. Uh, you know what? You've had power in Scotland. Either take it and bugger off, or actually pull your weight and actually pull together. Leadership is about using what force you have and pushing it forward. May is not a leader. May is a clown. May should never have been allowed into that position simply because she's a very uh, self-serving. She's parasitical. If you look at the Olympics and the G4S thing and her husband's relationship with that and just follow the patterns, um, they will come out of this quite well, probably like old green and the British home stores. Um, we're living in an environment that's toxic. And people need to stop thinking it's for and against Brexit. It's nothing to do with it. These, by, these, <laughs> these guys are not aligned to a country's allegiance. They're either self-serving or they're corporate serving. Um, Tony Blair is the ambassador of what's wrong with the UK. He's exactly what is wrong. And so many of these people are exactly the same. And I stress this because like today, the emphasis is NHS needs more money. These old people need more health care. They should pay more into the system. Reality. These people paid into the system. The money was spent over 20, decades, uh, 20 years ago. And the NHS can't support it. Because the NHS is a burden of state. If you actually analysed 
where the NHS spends money, you would understand it's not the nursing, it's the, not the problem. It's not the um, clinical services, it's the bureaucracy. It's the chief executives that will kill people, fail, then move next door and get a golden handshake for moving next door. And yet they should have been struck off and not allowed anywhere near a hospital. That's the problems in the H NHS. And they lie to you day in, day out, all the time. Giving 25-year-olds £10,000 is not actually a solution to a problem. It's actually inflating the problem in the sense that the argument being is that they cannot afford a house. The housing market is in a bubble. It should have been allowed to collapse, whether people like it or not. If it collapsed, it would have had a revaluation and actually been a realistic pricing model. Instead, we bailed the banks out at the taxpayer's expense, which we could have spent on housing. Think about that. You could have spent it on housing, redevelopments, upgrading, expansion. Um, instead, you gave it to the banks. You gave it to them. And what have they given you in return? A delay time for the next recession and now they're on about giving ten thousand pounds to 25 year olds to buy into properties that's what it's, that's what it's about it's actually the realizing the wheels are starting to turn on the hamster wheel because once those wheels stop turning guess what comes next economic crisis they need to pump debt into the next generation and my bit of advice on that is educate your kids, educate the next generation, educate yourself. As somebody brought up on my other channel today, uh, sorry, today and yesterday, about being a chartered uh, surveyor, don't buy a house in the UK. There is a shortage of chartered surveyors. If a company needs you, they can hire you in. I've been doing this for years. I've been doing it for over a decade. Companies will pay your hotel bill. They will pay you to fly into the UK, buy your house here. You can buy a house for about, say, £50,000 in Spain, and you'll have access to a swimming pool, tennis court, and a council tax that is €220 Euros a year instead of, what, £60 a month and get nothing in return. You'll get your bins collected three times a week, if not more. You're in an environment that has excess houses, so it's retained its cheapness. If you rent here, it's cheap. Ultimately, it's a global market. And there has been a thing about the refugees recently dis discussing this, where the fact is with the global market, people in Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, Middle East, are recognizing the globalization shows them they've got access to money by going elsewhere. I agree with them. The global market's done exactly that. It has shown the transparency between rich and poor globally. But also they forget to add in the, the middle figures, which is cost of living. They've cut out the realities of education that myself being educated in the sense of I'm an engineer, I'm a surveyor. I come from facilities management. I've got an engineer. I'm engineering management. Um, I'm asset management. And somebody thinks, you know what? I can earn the same as him. I'll come to the UK. What have you done? Well, I worked on the goat farm for the last 20 years. And when they arrive, they go, I'm a teacher. Now, the, the funny thing with that is they can't verify where these people come from, but they suddenly teachers. Well, I'm not being funny, just asking where their teaching degree come from. Um, but anyway, the news article today is farcical. Um, I do not understand the BBC anymore, in all honesty. The BBC is so false in media, it's like reading the Daily Mail. Um, but I just thought today, that is the worst story I can't even call it a news article story um, relation in a relationship that younger people are disconnected from the old and blame the old for something. The old didn't do this. The BBC did this. The BBC and the media do this all day long. 
because they don't put in the reality which is that this is distorted by government. Government are parasitical, government are failing, government are greedy, government are corrupt, government have an entire lobby chain to destabilize what is Western living. Um, but I just want to leave that out there. There'll be a few questions and answers, I'm sure. Um, but my point being is, I'll put the link below for the article. Let me know your thoughts, because if people are stupid enough to believe this, my God, what are you going to believe when the Brexit fully happens? Thank you.